Guten Yardening, everybody. Well, I've had a lot of questions about how we're going to overwinter our strawberries growing in our green stalk leaf system. And so today I want to talk to you about what we're doing to get these ready. And really, if you're growing strawberries in a container just in general, this is going to be great advice for you. Strawberries are a really nice and pretty hardy perennial. And if you're in one of the higher zones, like grow zone seven plus, you probably don't have to do too much over the winter. But since we're in zone five, Wisconsin, and we're growing these in containers, well, we have to take care of them a little bit more than those warmer growing zones. After all, a container garden allows them to get a little bit colder than if they're grown in ground. But the nice thing is it's actually pretty simple to get these prepared for the winter. One of the things I think is really easy to forget when it comes to overwintering strawberries and just overwintering any plant that can actually stay outside is that you want to keep it watered up until the point where the soil freezes completely. So even though we've had multiple days here where our temperatures have gone below 23, 24 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that we're still not frozen over here. So we want to make sure that we're still keeping the mix in here nice and damp for them. That's going to really help them survive this cold weather. So in all likelihood, we're going to need to water this about once every week or every two weeks, depending on what our weather looks like. But again, we're just trying to keep the soil damp. And of course, with this green stalk, you're watering at the top and it's going to flow the whole way down anyway. Now, I know it may seem counterintuitive to keep watering even as the temperatures are freezing, but I promise you it will help the health of your plant. If you're not watering, you're going to have limp and unhealthy plants prior to these strawberries going into dormancy. And you can see these still look really nice, even though some parts of them are starting to die back. Now, if your winter temperatures rarely drop below 27 or 28 degrees Fahrenheit, then you're not really going to have an issue with just keeping this as is in your green stock or in whatever container you're growing in. But if like us, you have temperatures well below that often during your winter, then you do want to make sure to go ahead and winterize this as best you can. So step one was making sure that we're keeping it watered. Step two is waiting for it to die back which will happen as you start to see those freezing temperatures on a consistent basis. And you may think that it's dying completely, but that's not the case. But if you've ever bought strawberry plants from the store, you know that it looks like roots and not much else. But once these do go into dormancy, what's going to happen is all of this starts to look like these pieces. And once we've had a couple of days, maybe three or four days in a row of freezing temperatures, we're really going to start to see these turn into this brownish color. And it's at that point, once you see all of this turning yellow or even brown, that you can come in and clip it right off. And the reason you wanna do that is because you want to avoid any chance that they'll be rotting. Plus this isn't where the new growth is going to come from next year anyway. So we're avoiding rotting and we're just cutting it back and the other thing that could happen is you'll have some rotten strawberries left over and that's really a breeding ground for things we don't want bred in here with regard to insects etc and so we're going to get these out of here as well now we're a little bit early because we haven't had all those frosts so i'm going to clean out one of the ones that is already completely died back and i'll show you what that looks like all right with this one i've cut everything back to the crown now if i can move this a little bit you can see where there is still a little bit of new growth here but that is definitely not going to develop the cold weather is coming in fact we're supposed to get a little bit of snow over the next couple of days but now we have all this empty space in here which will also make it easy to winterize this area now if your climate has relatively mild winters then the next step for you might be as simple as just moving whatever type of container you have up closer to your house so that it gets some of that warmth that the building has collected Alternatively, you could move it into an unheated garage, which will work just as well, again, if you don't have those massively cold temperatures. Now, this is a little heavier than, say, a hanging basket, and the green stalk is definitely made tough enough to survive even a really cold winter. So we don't really need to move it indoors, but what we're going to do instead is we're going to pack the pockets with material that's going to help to keep these warm. Now we definitely have quite a few options as to what we might want to use to pack this. And I've just got three of them laid out here, but if you have something else that you prefer, go for it. What we have is some grass from our last mowing of the year. As long as there's not a lot of seeds or weed seed in here, you're gonna be just fine. This makes a great insulator, a great mulch. We also have some leaves. I mean, now is the season, right? It's fall. And so there are plenty of these lying around. You can crumple these up just like so 
and these go perfectly in as a nice mulch, a nice protective layer. And then of course we have our hay. As you know, we love growing in hay bales. We love using hay as mulch. We've had great success with this. And I know some people don't like to use hay, but this is spoiled hay. There aren't very many seeds in here. And so this makes an exceptional mulch. Of course, straw would work very well as well. So winterizing with this mulch is as simple as sticking it in here on top of the plant. You're not going to cause any harm to the plant since we've already cut it back. And this is just going to help this part stay warm. And that's really all we're gonna to have to do for each of these pockets. And it's gonna make a pretty big difference. Now, even with all these precautions in place, it is possible that we could lose 10 or 15% of the plants, but there are quite a few plants in here. In fact, there are 84 strawberry plants in this one green stalk. And so I think we could handle a little bit of loss, especially since these varieties send out runners, which we can then put into other pockets and replace them. Now, clearly from what I said, this is not quite ready to have the entire thing winterized. That'll probably happen in the next week or so because those temperatures are getting colder. That cold weather, consistent cold weather, weather is coming our way for sure. So once that happens, I'll go ahead and trim the rest of these back. Now Greenstock does sell a cover for the winter. If that's something you want to take a look at, you can go to their website and check it out. We do have a $10 coupon in the description below. But what we're going to do for now is we're going to add one more layer of protection. And again, this is going to finally go on once we've cut everything back. But I'm going to show you what we're using. For now, what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this burlap that we have, and it's a pretty inexpensive way of doing this. And once we've cut this back, once it's ready to be fully winterized, we're going to wrap a few layers around the exterior of this entire green stalk. And that's going to help protect this from that cold wind and some of those cooler temperatures. So we have a nice layer of mulch added here and we have this wrap around it. So I think we're gonna be in pretty great shape. And one more thing, if this dies back and we get it winterized before there's a freezing of all the soil, well, we can still water it right from the top. And so that'll be a pretty easy fix. Now, if you're growing your strawberries in a smaller container or a hanging basket or something just really easy to move around, then adding this layer of mulch and moving it closer to your house or into your garage might be all you need to do. We're just adding that extra step because this is staying right here and we wanna watch it over winter because I think next season, these 84 strawberry plants are going to perform very well. And I think you'll be in great shape too if you follow these simple steps. Well, we hope you enjoyed this strawberry overwintering video and found it useful. And if you did, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe. And most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.